Today I'm going to be working on my new air compressor. I've had it for a couple days now, and uh, it didn't come with an hour meter anywhere. So I ordered one, and it just finally came in. So we're going to put it in this cabinet here. Somewhere it's out of the way, somewhere it's easy to see, but I have to take the cover off first and find out where that place is. So first step is going to be cut the breaker off. Um, make sure it's off, take your tester, come in here where your line comes in, follow it up, make sure you are turned off. Uh, make sure, because it, it could be mislabeled, it could be on the wrong breaker, God knows. So I got my meter out. And before we go any farther, kind of talk about what this is. This is a contactor with thermal overload, right? So what happens is the power comes in from the panel up on the top of this contactor. Uh, a contactor is nothing more than a big relay. A, re a relay or contactor uses a lower amperage or lower voltage to control a higher amperage or higher voltage, one or the other. So what this is, is behind here, is just imagine a set of contacts, and there's a coil in the middle with a spring. So what happens is when it, you complete the circuit on the coil, it becomes a magnetic draw closes the contacts when the circuit is opened they release so it makes contact and breaks contacts with a with a much heavier set of uh, contacts and, and springs now that is controlled on a lower small voltage you'll see it comes down here okay comes out of here to this little this flex this is you know um, metal flexible conduit uh, there's an actual name for it but what doesn't matter to a pressure switch. Now this is just a single single wire in, single wire out. And what happens is the air comes in into this pressure switch. All right, when it comes in the pressure switch, there's a spring in here on another set of contacts. When the air pressure drops, it allows that spring to act. When it acts, it closes the contacts. When you start building more pressure, it, the pressure, air pressure is enough to overcome the spring pressure and opens the contacts. When it opens the contacts, it shuts off the contactor. When it closes the contacts, it closes the contactor. Pretty simple. So then once that's closed, it comes into our thermal protection here. Comes up, and the thermal protection comes out and then goes to the motor. All right, so that's a preset. So what we're going to do is stick my hour meter up here, and we need to be what's on what's called the load side. We need to be on the side after the contactor is switched. You see it's all tied together here with a metal bus bar that comes down to the thermal. So our options are to come down off of here, off the load side, which I don't want to do. What I'd like to do is come off the pressure switch. I'd like to use the pressure switch as the power to run the hour meter because the pressure switch has everything we need already up here because it's controlling that magnet so we're going to tap off of here and you'll see there's other taps in here so we're going to tap off of here for our hour meter so let me get the wiring set up we're going to use stake on connectors just like this crimp connectors they slide on the back of the meter they'll slide on here all right so here's the wires i added sometimes i'll twist them like this um just to uh Make it so they're not interfering with anything and they stay together. I want them a little bit long so we can take that cover off and actually pull it out and see what you're doing to be able to unplug them if you need. Um, I'm going to replace these with insulated ends. Ones that, uh, these are covered completely in the same material so that they can't touch each other. You pull it out or anything, but uh, I had to order more because I'm out. But that's what I would normally want to use. So now we can just plug these in which I can't do here. Let me get these plugged in here. All right, so they're plugged in. Just get our wires down there out of the way. And there's two detents on the top of that that have to go on the top of this box. Okay. This goes in as a reset. I use just a couple fill machine screws in here. Um, or uh, sheet metal screws, I mean. And now we're ready to give it a test. So... Let's see, i got to put this cover back on. So let me get this all set up, ready to go, and we'll turn it on. I'm going to turn this off, drain the air out of the bottom so we can get this.
pressure down below 140 because it kicks on at 140. So when I turn it on, um, I don't have to, I can be here right when I turn it on and watch and make sure everything works. So let me drain some pressure out. I know it's loud, but I'm draining all the pressure out of the tank so we can get down fairly low. So once we turn it on, we can make sure it actually counts up. So I know it's really loud, but give me a second, I'll get this down and we'll start it up. All right, so you can see it's on zero now. Now I've got the breaker on and we're gonna kick this on. And it's gonna take a while, um, so you may wanna turn your volume down. In fact, we'll come back to this after it's shut off once see if it's changed and then I'll do it again then that should be enough that should be about six minutes okay we're at two tenths exactly because what I did when I shut the camera off I, I shut the compressor off too because I thought you know what I should probably make sure this is accurate so I uh, got a stopwatch counter on my on my phone and started it at it and stopped it short of the few seconds of that video clip where we just turned it on so i added it to it and i stopped it at exactly uh six minutes with the uh little pit you know subtracted from six minutes so we'd be accurate and it's it's dead on dead on so i'm gonna do it one more time just to be sure all right it is right on the money um i ran it up until it hit the exact uh, six minute mark and then shut it off it didn't the second time it didn't make it all the way up but anyway so you see how it was done this I just took a, a small drill bit drilled the corners where it didn't I, I laid tape on it first drew it out drilled my corners where I want them and then connect them with a die grinder knocked the piece out and then just filed it flat till it fit correctly and pre-drilled my two screws um, so if you got to add one on yours I don't know maybe you bought a nice one that already has that but if you do that's how we do it so uh, I'm gonna run that up so it's correct and that way I know exactly what it is so if you guys like what we're doing give us that thumbs up if you haven't already hit that subscribe button leave your comments down below we'll catch you on the next one